like you know from the topic of this video uh, we're going to talk about the planet so this is the planet unit we have two of them this is the wbs 502n wireless planet point to point and um, you've been using them for ages in this stage but there's a new release with the latest firmware that allow you to power up this device 12 volts dc but also we power up from the regular PoE 48 volts. So if you're going to use the 12 volts P uh, DC, you just uh, need a one amp power supply. That should be sufficient to power them up. Also, when you set them up uh, before you start, before you go and try to log into any of these devices, uh, make sure, uh, like you see, there's a latch here at the bottom that can be open it. That's it. You have the power, you have the PoE and you have the LAN at the bottom of the uh, unit. So there's also this uh, small, like a dip switch that has to be changed in a case if one of your devices is an access point, you need to make sure it's set to master. And the second one, it's set to slave. So once you have them set up, power them up, then you just need to go to your laptop. What I usually do, I'm powering up first unit and setting them up um, as an access point. Then uh, I just disconnect, the, not the power, but disconnect the uh, ethernet port just have it powered up, still connect it, um, and then I, clear, and I connect the client to this, uh, to this unit. So let me show you how to do it. So like you see here, I already changed this one. This is gonna be my slave unit. I have the power up, also have the main uh, access point power up. By default, the IP address of both units, it's 192.168.1.253. So make sure your laptop, your PC will be on the same range before you try to log into one of these. So like I said, with the, uh, first of all, we're gonna try to log into uh, to an access point. So let me move on and actually show you the monitor. Here you go. It's the login page of our planet. I'm just gonna refresh the page and we're just gonna log in. The default password is just admin. Um, like you see here, this is the main page and where we're going to go first is the setup wizard. So in this page, we're just going to choose the access point, the AP mode here, and that will allow us to enter the details. So straight away, we can change the AP address of this device. Usually when we have them, when you buy them from, from uh, Fortis, we have them pre-configured for you. But for multiple sites, uh, multiple uh, like connections, if you like, uh, you might need to have more than one pair. So in that case, you might need to, definitely gonna need to change the IP address for each one of them to be different. So let me check this one first. And uh, so now we have the 192.168.1.2 or one, that would be our access point. So once we have the access point, we click next. We can call it uh, AP, that's grand as an access point. Set the encryption just to make it more secured and Wi-Fi password as well. So this is our details. The most important is this SSID. Uh, we can call it like, uh, if you like, Fortis in this case, and our password here. So go ahead, click next. Device will reboot now. So that's the longest part. You always have to wait for the device to, to reboot after changing those settings. So once we have the settings changed and we're waiting for the reboot, like where you can use this uh, planets and what's the actual distance they can go ahead and, and you can connect to different lands together. In the spec that says you can go ahead and have them up to two kilometers uh, line of sight. Obviously there will be no obstacles, no trees. Even now or in a couple of months, there will be like bare trees make sure that no, they won't look through the trees because in the, in, in the spring and the summer, they won't, they're never gonna work for you. So because of the leaves on the trees. So make sure every single one of them, they're line of uh, sight and they're actually aligned together. Make sure they're actually not talking to each other fully. We can see the quality of the connection later on as well in one of the clients and how does it look like. And obviously we can, we can, we can adjust the angle of the, uh, one of the clients or an, an access point if you like of course you can have multiple points so you can have one access point and for example three clients connected together you imagine you have one access point in one main building and you have three other buildings that you like to point at this access point you just need to be careful with the angle i would say up to 45 degrees angle 
uh, it's it's quite all right obviously not for up to like two kilometers then but a few hundred meters there shouldn't be any problem uh, also you need to always be careful about the um, uh, any wireless that you might be currently on site it could be any wireless that might be interfering your own uh, wi-fi and you just need to double check might need to change the frequency of your wi-fi access point just to get yourself nice and clean uh, channel uh, the other issue might you might come across is uh, obviously the power uh, so if you have like all and you like to daisy chain one uh, access point to, to the client and then back to back client to an access point you can offer of course link them together uh, through the data port or have the switch on that pole and have them both connected here you go our access point is back online so we're just gonna log in now so this is our access point it's not connected to anything whatsoever right now uh, so now we're just gonna move on to the client i'm just gonna need to disconnect my access point from my switch and connect my client okay so my second uh, access point i'm sorry second client second uh, unit it's set by default to 253 so i'm just gonna need to log into it and again we just go to the wizard on the left hand side and make sure uh, this dip switch at the bottom of this unit it's set to slave and then you just select this repeat mode and what we have here you're just going to scan your network uh, this client will be looking for any wi-fi in the range we'll be looking for any wireless uh, connection just going to wait for the list to pop up once we have it here you can see there's a Fortis uh, 5G access point. We just select that 5G access point and uh, make sure the password is correct as well. And we'll go ahead and go next. So let me go ahead and click next. And then again, on this page, we can change the IP address of this second device. So our client, so any other client would be like 203, 204, for example. This is the, just an example. You can have your own range if you like. It's just the range. I know it's free. So you make sure when you set up this IP address, it's definitely uh, free to go. So again, now we just need to wait for this device to reboot and connect back again to um, our network. Once we have them all connected in a second, um, it's a, like you, you treat this connection like a bare wire. So you have one device on one end of the planet link and the other device on the other uh, on the second one uh, once they have the wi-fi connected it's just like a bare wire so they will start seeing each other you can log in and um, into the into individual devices if you like uh, from one end or another usually the access point is set where the dvr is and the client um, planet would be set up where the camera is uh, and the question is how many cameras you can actually broadcast via this wireless link and um, in this case i would tell you that um, it all depends on the quality of this connection and um, the speeds that you you have available here it's up to 300 megabits per second but again if the distance it's no it's up to nearly two kilometers those speeds will uh, will be will be much lower than and um, again if there will be multiple cameras on site with like high resolution cameras with a lot of bitrate I would like to push it through and again in my in my in my not handlet. So uh, like the maximum amount of cameras I ever seen them you now been broadcasted so far it was about 20 cameras and they were like a daisy chain. So there was like access point to the client, then back to back client to an access point and so on and so forth. So um, you could have up to 20 on that weakest link on the first link going through that. So here you go. Uh, we have this um, second client back on line. So we're just going to log into it. And we see what we have there. So you see the signal strength. It's really good. It's 16 dB and, and so it's it's you not know, just because if it's you no know, they beside they beside each other. And our channel number is 36. That's how we are connecting. And the question is, can I log in to the access point back again? I should be able to. So I'm just going to refresh the access point page and there we are. So we have our access point. We can see what is the current use, the, how much is sending and receiving. But also we can see um, if I'm connected to anything. 
and if there's any clients connected. So we can see there's one client connected. So this client is the 202 in my case. So this is what is connected to the main unit. Once I have my cameras connected on either end and the recorder uh, as well, I can transmit all that data back to the recorder and record it, uh, all those cameras, no problem whatsoever. You just, as I said, treat that as a, a burnt cable. So it's really nice piece of equipment. We've been sending those for ages now, since I remember back in the days. Um, the planet they keep involved in, like there was only like these uh, injectors that you have to connect. Now we have the PoE that it's uh, 48 volts. You can just power it up straight up the PoE. No more injectors needed for, for, for those latest planets. Uh, or you just use the simple 12 volts DC that you know you always have handy in advance. Uh, in this case, uh, like you see here, the connection it's really straightforward. Once you have the access point established, um, the access point is like kind of router in your home. You just need to connect client, which is your uh, second planet unit, to this access point by knowing the SSID uh, name and obviously the wireless password. Once you have them done and set it up and uh, their line of sight, there'll be no problem whatsoever.